I recently released a video about the Siglent SDM 3065X multimeter calibration. Now I've done some work on this and I actually got some more information since I made that video. I'm actually going to go through this with you. Now what I've actually done is on my website here defpom.com I've created a page which you saw me link to here just Siglent SDM calibrations. This is a page to generate the calibration files for you. So this will just give it the files. It doesn't matter what system on. It could be on Windows, Linux, Mac. Does not matter. It will generate a CSV file for you based on the information that you put into this form. This is what I've been working on. It took me a few days to build this. I've also got some extra information about the actual calibration details. So this is recently released. This is like updated calibration info. Now we've got templates for the 3045X and the 3055, which are different to the 3065X. So these are the 3065X templates. You notice there's no template here for capacitance. And we go to this one here, the 3045 and the 3055. We have less templates, but it has a capacitance one, which isn't actually mentioned in the documentation. So I don't actually know if that works or not. So I haven't actually built a capacitance file generator because I just don't have enough information yet on that. I may add that on later on once that becomes available. But for now, we'll just ignore that one. It's going to be hard to do capacitance anyway because you need a whole bunch of standard capacitors of exactly the right values. So it's going to be really hard for most people to do it. I mean, I don't have the capacity to do it. So I don't think anybody else really would be that into that one anyway. So yeah, for now, that's not on the table. That's left out. So we'll have a quick look at the manuals, then we'll go into the website and I'll show you what I've done here. And you can see then a bit more information about how they actually use the site and how to generate the files. As I showed previously, I've got all these templates. These are the original Signal ones. So let's go into one of these. Just do a quick look on this. It's going to be a bit small, but I'm just going through each one and it shows you the formats. Now you can see I've got this weird character here which shows up for the ohms symbol. I've seen this in other instruments too when I was writing the scripts for the test controller, writing a script for the um, Siglent SDL 1030X um, when I wrote the script for that one. And I actually had the same issue with the weird symbols for the ohm symbol. These are all the ones for the 3065X. All right. So this has got the extra range. It's got the 3 hertz filter range or filter mode, really. And also the auto zeroing on all modes for DC as well. You guys effectively got twice as many modes here. It's also got some differences. I'll get to those and I'll show you the form. Here's the 3045X and the 3055. And they're very similar, but different. There are some differences. Also, it's got a capacitance one here, which it's not explicitly saying what it really wants. But there is some differences on the file format. I actually might demonstrate this, actually. So DC volts. You see on here, it's got minus 240 millivolts and 240 millivolts. This is different to the 3065. If I do the 3065 you see we've got zero point settings as well, which I showed you in the previous video. And they're not called millivolts, they're based on a one volt reference or a voltage reference, right? So it's point of a volt in this case, right? So it's based on one volt as a reference point, whereas in these at meters, they actually specify millivolts. So there are some differences in the files. So you couldn't actually use the 3065 files for the 3045X or the 3055. Now I have this information, we really at least have that knowledge of what's required. Now, based on the information I found here, I've actually built a site. So let's just have a quick look at the manuals. So this is the updated manuals for how to do these. So this is basically referencing the 3065X. It doesn't actually specify the 3055 or 3045, so it's not quite complete, I suppose. But uh, it's an updated version of what I showed before, which is improved. And this has got several pages, which is basically the same thing, but again, improved over the original version I showed before. So it has been updated since the last time. Yeah, I don't know if it's been improved a lot, but it's, it's slightly better. So that's that part. Let's show you the website. Important instructions, make sure you read all of this if you're going to use the site. It is important you read this and actually understand what's going on and what the site is trying to do for you. I've got a link into my previous video, so when I actually release this video, I will put a link on here for this video also to basically tell you how to use the site and what it's about. Now, I've been gradually evolving the site since I first got the file generator on there. So, originally I started off with just put generating files, that was it. So, I thought I can do a bit more than that. I can make it a bit more functional for people. So, the first thing you have to do if you use a site is you have to change which meter you're using, right? So, if you want a calibration file for 3065X, you have to do anything, it's correct. If you're using a 3055 or 3045X, then you have to select the correct meter. What that does, it changes the page layout and files for the correct meter. So if I go to 3055, for example, that stripped out all the unnecessary stuff from the DC volts range here. 
and only gives you the ones you need to worry about filling in. Also it takes away a second function. So if I go back to 3065, the calibrate mode is DC volts or DC volts auto zero. This is only available on 3065X. Things like this, you don't need to worry about those for these other meters. So what you have to do normally is you do that one. If you've got, if you've got 3065, you generate that one, put your details in, or your calibrated values, the multimeter values, that you, you know what's actually displayed on the meter, and then you do a do a generate and that'll generate the file for you. And then you'd go to the auto zero version and do exactly the same thing. And that would generate both calibration files for your meter. The other thing I recommend you do before you actually go down and do that calibration stuff, you've got the serial number here. Now if you actually think you may need to retrieve your previous calibration data to generate a new script, so if you want to tweak it a bit or something like that and just gradually fine tune or even keep a history of your calibration. You can put your serial number in here. This is completely optional. You don't have to do it. Now it's only used for two things. It's used for generating part of the file name. So when you generate the file, the serial number goes into the file name. So you know which meter it's for in case you've got multiple meters calibrating. And the other thing is it means the site will then store it. Well, it stores anyway, but it will then store the serial number and allow you to retrieve the last calibration. So if I put in testing, this is one of the ones I was using, right? Just testing. It's not actually the general, you know, it begins with SDM or something. Um, if you put that in, and then I do load last calibration, it's pre filled with this, all my testing data. So this is just me making sure that I'm saving and retrieving the data correctly. So what these numbers here, just me just going through them all and making sure they're working, right? So each time you submit one of those forms, each time you do this submission, it will store that data in the database. Now, if you don't leave your serial number in there, the data's still there. It remembers the last one. Now, what that will mean is that if you don't put your serial number in here and you're the only person using the site at the time, you can load it again and it will retrieve your last one. But there's also potentially to retrieve somebody else's last one because they didn't put the serial number in. It's meaningless to anybody else, obviously, because it only references the meter it's put on. If you put your serial number in here, it means you can at least retrieve your last calibration. And it does this for each of the modes, right? So each mode is independent of each other. So you can do this mode alone, and then you know maybe come down here and you want to do AC current instead. Um, and you can do that one. And when you do retrieve, it'll get whatever's in the database for each mode. It's not necessarily that session, as it were. So you can do this any time. I do recommend you put your serial number in purely because then it gives you that convenience to be able to retrieve your last calibration. If you're worried about security or um, you know privacy that kind of stuff, that's fine. Don't put it in. It's up to you completely. You could always you know, once you've got the CSV file on your computer, you could always potentially manually manipulate that yourself on your machine. But if you've got a line ending problem, your files may not be valid anymore. Okay, just a warning for that, because as I discussed in the previous video, if you're using a Mac or you have a system where the line endings aren't quite correct on the CSV files, the meter will ignore them. All right, so that's the concern is you may have issues with that then. All right. If you're not sure about what I'm talking about, watch my previous video, which is linked here. This one describes all that information. So up here, you also got this load calibration. So it's only if you're gonna be retrieving your data. If you're not retrieving data, you haven't saved anything yet, you can completely ignore this table here. I've also changed the formatting. So when I did the previous discussions about the way you have to do this, you have to put in you know one volt referenced on the like 3065X at least it is. It's one volt reference. So in, in these we'd have had to put like 0 0.2 volts, right? If that was using that system, but now I've changed this to automatic scales. So in this case, it's it's a millivolt reading instead. It just makes it a little bit simpler. It doesn't matter so much on the voltage ranges. It's a bit less of an issue here. But if we go down to currents, you know, you got 200 microamps, for example. You know, this would be 0 0.0002. All right, and then you're getting a bit. No, it will be a minus as well. So everything, watch out for signs, be a negative. Um, so that would be something you have to watch out for. Is like previously I was saying about being referenced to the main scaling. So in amps, it is, you know, in current mode, it being referenced to amps. And you have to do it with that. But now I've done automatic conversion. So when you submit this file, or when you submit your data, it automatically converts it for you. So you can use in the, the smallest numbers possible to make it easier to do. Obviously 200 microamps on this one will just be minus 200. Right, but referenced here is 100 microamp is a reference point, so you do one minus 100. Yes, yeah, so I've done this to try and make it simpler to do the form. So you just put in as the example is given in the center column here. Right, that is 
what it's expecting. So it gives you an idea of the scaling you're supposed to be using, that sort of stuff, because it just makes it a bit easier to deal with. Well, it makes it a lot easier to deal with. And if you come down to resistance, this is all based on ohms. So for, say, 2 kilo ohms, you have to put in 2,000. You know, 20 kilo ohms, you have to put in 20,000. You know, and so on. You know, 1 mega ohm, you have to put in 1 million ohms. It's a bit awkward to use, so that's why I've done this now. So it's based on the, the main range it's in. So he's put in, you know, one mega ohm, you put in one meg, all right? Or 10, 100 mega ohms, you put in 100, all right? Because you're in a mega ohm range, so it's re relative to the mega ohm range. And I'd have submitted that. <laughs> so it's generally a calibration file for me. So mega ohms, you put in ref mega ohm reference, and kilo ohms, you put in a kilo ohm reference, and ohms, you put in an ohms reference, all right? So that's just trying to make it easier. And so each of these is independent forms. So you can do one form and not do the rest. If you've only got one mode which is out of calibration, you don't have to do that one mode, you have to do all of them. And there's another little trick I can tell you too. Right? So if I reload the page, it's got fresh raw data in there. So when you first load the page, everything is equal. Right? So if you have an issue where you've got a historical user calibration, which is wrong because you made a mistake and it's a way out or something like that, and you just want to ignore it, and this also applies to if you're doing multiple modes. So each, because you've only got one option to turn the calibration on and off, right? User calibration or factory calibration, as I discussed in the previous video. So once you're on user calibration, any calibration data you've put into that meter is active. So if you get one mode which is incorrect, but other modes are right, you might find, oh, you have to keep switching back and forth to make sure you've got the right accuracy, and you have to try and remember and keep track of that. But what you can actually do, is as I discussed in a previous video, you have to make sure you're in a factory calibration first, if you're using a factory calibration, you can then generate a blank script. Right? So say if you want to reset your DC volts user calibration, because it's wrong, you just load the default data, generate the file. That file will then have the data in it, which will give you a correction of zero. So it won't do any corrections when you go to user calibration. It means that everything lines up, so it doesn't try and shift anything off from the catchy calibration. That's the other thing you can do. So if you do have one which is wrong, or you've got one which you've made a mistake on or something, and you want to say, okay, my DC volts is good, but my AC volts is wrong, but the factory calibration is good for that, or closer, then you can actually just go and generate a blank script, and then you load that one in as a user calibration. And then that will take the corrections off that particular mode, and then you back to basically when you go to user calibration, although it will be effectively a user calibration because you've loaded a file in, it will still be using the factory calibration data in that case because it hasn't done any corrections. All right, so there's a bit of a workaround there if you make a mistake or you need to take something back out again. But once you've done that once, you don't have to do it again, you have to do it once because it stores the last one you put in. Okay, I think that kind of covers it. Let me show you the files it generates. Let's pull this up. Okay, so I generate a few files by clicking those various buttons. All right, so these are what's generated. This is a raw data one, I think. Yes. So this is a raw data file. So you could use this one to reset your calibration data. And the same for that one there, I think. No, this one's one of my testing files, so this is actually not rated. All right, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so this one you couldn't do. This is just me testing. So that gives you an idea, though. So this one here, if you had this file, you could load that into your multimeter as a user calibration file from the factory calibration. Nothing you have to be in the factory calibration before you do any loading. This will then remove your previous user calibration. It will keep basically your factory calibration in that mode. Now I'll still say as a user calibration present because it's you loaded a file up, but it won't do any corrections from the factory calibration. So if you make a mistake, you can always go back to factory, even in user mode. Like I said, this serial number is not being used for anything other than generating the file name and allowing you to retrieve your previous calibration. Every calibration you do is stored in the database. Okay, so if you do put your serial number in here, although when you do a load, it's only loading your last one, your previous ones are in there. So I may, maybe, try and figure out a way of allowing you to choose which one you want to go back to. I may add that later on, I'm not sure, but right now I thought, well, I'll just go to the last calibration point, and that will probably be good enough for most people if it does become a need where loading a point before the last one is something you want to do, then I should be able to add that in. But in order to do that, you have to have your serial number in it first. I don't care what your serial numbers are, I'm not looking at that, I'm not doing anything with them, apart from allowing it to be used on the site for you. Just disclaimer there tonight, so you know that I'm not trying to be funny about anything there. This is only valid for the 3065X, because you've got the secondary modes and primary modes, because obviously you submit the same form twice. So I've been having two forms which are almost identical, 
all I did is I just put this menu here to choose between which mode, right? DC volts or DC volts or zero, for example, or AC system zerts the three hertz filter instead. Don't forget to share the video. I think people might be interested in this and knowing how to calibrate their STM meters. And make sure you read the instructions. I may refine these instructions as time goes by. I mean, change the formatting to make it easier to read even. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not a designer. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that usual stuff. And check out the site and use it.